Friends, as I've already mentioned, the message today is about knowing God and communicating with Him. Let me begin by saying it's impossible to know God without being saved. It is impossible for an unsaved person to know God, to really know God. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name in heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Acts 4 verse 12. No man will succeed in knowing God while he has an, and I say man, I mean woman, an unregenerate mind, or remains unreconciled to God. We will just not understand what it's all about unless we have received our salvation. Christ died on the cross so that mankind could be reconciled to God. When I say God, I mean Yahweh or Jehovah. Beautiful song we sang starting this morning. There's no one like Jehovah. We've got to recognize that there is a particular God who is the Father of Jesus Christ that we as Christians praise and worship and have a relationship with. There are no alternatives to that. It's only Him and no one else. So salvation is possible through Christ alone. Jesus himself said, No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14 verse 6. Now, I believe what Jesus says. I believe the entire word of God, but when, when, when it's in red letters and Jesus is speaking, I sit up. Do I know that is the total truth. Quite early in my Christian walk, I realized that the only point of beginning to know God and to commun communicate properly with Him is to endeavour to discover who He really is. That's a wonderful exercise. It changes our entire perspective of our Christian walk when we go into the situation of, of endeavouring at least to try and understand and know who God is. May I say at the outset that we will never really completely know God. Some of you will say, yes, amen, I can see it. the heads already go. But Isaiah 55 verse 8 states quite clearly that his thoughts are not our thoughts. We're just not always on the same wavelength. And our ways are not his ways. So because of that, we will not really fully understand him. In addition, we are the creatures and he's the creator. Not so. And the creatures cannot be expected to be on a par with the Creator. If that were possible, or if that were the case, we would all be little gods. Which in fact is a New Age belief. In the New Age, they believe that you can actually become like God. You, 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 you know, whatever you achieve in life is in yourself. It's not from outside. Our view of God will determine our level of worship, our praise, our adoration, and our exaltation of, as well as our level of intimacy with Him. Take some time to discover who God is. It will change all of these things, your praise, your worship, and your intimacy with Him. In my quest to know God, I studied the Word of God, obviously, because I know that's God speaking to us. And I taught on the attributes of God, Lately at Lincoln Haven, or three, three years ago maybe, and in, church, in other churches as well. Let me say that I soon discovered that the real knowledge of God comes from a revelation by the Holy Spirit. That's why I get so excited when I walk into this church and I feel the Spirit is moving here. I know it's not a feeling thing, it's a faith thing. But if we only hear it and see it and feel it and experience it, it will make such a difference to us. I want to brag about this church. This church is going somewhere. Amen. Now that I bragged about the church, I want to brag about my God that I serve and His Holy Spirit. There's something happening in this church. Do you believe that? Yes. And from this church it's spreading throughout the community and to people that are not even in this church.
a real knowledge of God comes from a revelation by the Holy Spirit, not purely from an intellectual understanding. Allow me to give you a brief rundown of God's most important attributes. Uh, the things that I discovered about God. First of all, He is holy. Remember your sermon? He is holy. That is the one outstanding attribute of God, is His holiness. We were driving here this morning, my brother there said, when he woke up this morning, there was a song in his heart about holy, holy, holy. I said, well, come and listen to the sermon. It's the same Spirit speaking to you that's speaking to me. This most important of, of God's attributes sets God, God apart from all else. Not, not only everybody else, all else. He's beyond reproach. He's, we can't blame him when something goes wrong, in other words. His will, his plans and his intentions should not be questioned. He's indeed perfection personified. Now isn't he worthy of being praised and worshipped and adored and exalted, his name, if, there, if he is perfection? He is just. He rules with justice. And his ruling in justice includes eternal salvation through Christ or alternatively eternal damnation for all who deny Christ. That's what a, God, a just God has to do. If he did not do that, he would not be just. Yeah. He's in control. He never loses control over any situation. He's totally aware of what you are going through. I say again, if you feel unloved today, if you feel hurt in any way, turn to God. He's totally aware of your situation. He is strong, he is powerful, he is in fact, he is omnipotent. Nothing can compare with his power. He is all over, he is omnipresent. We cannot hide from him. Remember Adam, uh, Adam tried in the garden that he couldn't hide from God, God found him. So don't think that if things go wrong in your life you can run from God and things will sort themselves out. In fact, when things go wrong, turn to God. He's omniscient, he's all-knowing. We cannot argue with him and expect to win the argument. He knows us inside out. You know, I laugh sometimes at myself because I still try and hide something from God. Or I still try and tell God who I am. Or, or, but you, you should understand me, God, you know, you created me, so you should understand me. Uh, I'm not as good, you know, all those little arguments that we have. He knows you, you don't have to tell him. He is able. In other words, he can. This cancer thing? Is this cancer the can? He created us and can supply in our every need. He is love. He has to love because that is his very nature. I often hear even Christians talk about God hating certain situations or hating certain people or, or even hating me because things are not going on. God is a God of love. He is love, so He has to love. He's near or close. He sticks closer than a brother. He never leaves nor forsakes us. Be comforted by that today. That God will never leave you nor forsake you. He's not like us. His thoughts and His ways, as we've read in the scripture, are way beyond what we can think or what we can imagine. And when we consider all these attributes, and there are many more that we can consider, we come to one conclusion, and that is that God is in fact indescribable. He cannot be described. That's a gem. He's indescribable. But yet we, we can attempt. There's nothing wrong with trying to find out who God is. Just don't put him in a little box and expect him to act the way that you want him to act. He is indescribable. What a mighty and magnificent God we serve with all these attributes. Thank you for the overwhelming response to the profound statement I've just made. <laughs> I learned that one from, you will know where I learned that one from, from a preacher called Alan Jack Jackson. I love, he gets very serious about God and his, 
And he says, and God is this, and God is that, and do this, do that. And then when there's no response, he says, thank you for the overwhelming response to the profound statement that I've just made. We're still not used to the amens and the hallelujahs in this church. And that's going to be part of, of what's going to happen in the, in, the, in the months to come. We're going to be set free from religion. Amen. We're going to be set free by the Spirit of God just to move around. Hey, come on, you, you amen as lot as you... But it's actually amen. I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach the Lincoln Haven people. It's not amen. Amen is, is the uh, American television tele evangelist style. Amen. It's amen. Who watched the uh, the Duke of what's it was it the funeral yesterday? I love when those people says amen. That's the right way. That's proper Queen's English. <laughs> not that I can speak it. <laughs> Okay. Alan Jackson, by the way, uh, Mark loves sending his sermons to me because he thinks I need to be changed. But, uh, <laughs> and encouraged. Beautiful. Uh, it's worth listening to. I think you should do you send it to a wider audience or only to me? Only to you. <laughs> Alan Jackson, make a note of that name. You can find it for yourself. You don't need Mark to send it to you. Okay. I trust that most of you have also seen the video Indescribable by Louis Giglio. Um, Jenny showed a snippet from the video when she was preaching. While watching this DVD about the entire magnificent universe that God has created and how he maintains it, one has to come to the realization that God is indeed indescribable, unfathomable, and almighty God. Amen. We can only stand in awe of Him, declare His praises and worship Him. Maybe even, even falling prostrate on our faces. I love about the Old Testament. They knew how to worship God, you know that. And we've been spoiled by Jesus. Sorry, I'll say it in the right context. We've been spoiled by Jesus. We expect Jesus and the Holy Spirit to do everything. How, when last did you fall prostrate on your face in front of the Holy God, praising, worshipping Him, and thanking Him for His influence in your life? When last? I can't remember when last I did that. I think I, the last time I fell on my face was when someone laid hands on me and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Once we've discovered God through our Jesus, through Jesus' redemptive work, we should have the deepest desire to follow Him and to commune with Him. Even in our feeble attempts to discover who God really is, we should begin to realize that He's worthy of communication. The least we can do is talk to God, not ignore Him as if He doesn't exist. I often, you know when I go on holiday, now I don't go, I, I can only afford about three or four days nowadays, but when we went on six weeks holidays, often at the end of the holiday I think, how many times did I actually pray? How many times did I read the Bible? I'm shocked. I've been ignoring God, who is my everything, for virtually six weeks. I'm not saying every day of the six weeks, but now I go for three weeks so I can get back here, where it's warm, where there's people that I love, where we can actually have fellowship, one with the other, and fellowship with the living God. I'm still shaking. Look at this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Since the dawn of creation, God has desired to have communion with the people whom He has created. Throughout the ages, through the Old Testament and the New Testament, all those who played a significant God-given role were people who had communion with God. You see it throughout the Old Testament. Prayer plays a significant role in this. In the Old Testament, Enoch walked with God. Abraham was the friend of God. Jacob wrestled with God. Job remained faithful to God. Caleb and Joshua wholly followed the Lord their God. The prophets heard from God. Nowadays, churches frown upon the prophetic ministry. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that the prophetic ministry which was given by God, one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit, the people frown upon them. You know what? 
because they start feeling uncomfortable because they feel that they lose control the moment that the, the Holy Spirit takes over. Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. And then God spoke to him. David enjoyed the most intimate communion with God. Go and read the Psalms. You have to agree with what I say now. In the New Testament, the disciples enjoyed intimate communion with Jesus. This intimacy is summed up in Jesus' statement. Now I'm going to do this thing. Uh, in John 15, verse 4. John 15, verse 4, you can all see it. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And all, then 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17. We also read, But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. This clearly speaks of fellowship or intimacy or love of relationship, of abundant life, of communion with Jesus and with God. Amen. This is God's plan for us. We cannot walk the Christian walk, live the Christian life without communion with God on a regular basis. I don't want to make rules and say on a daily basis, but yes, preferably on a daily basis. In John 10, 27, Jesus states, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So all of this speaks clearly about the need for us to have communion with God. Now these verses emphasize the fact that not only are we privileged to speak to God, privileged to speak to Him, and to praise Him, and to worship Him, and to let our requests be known to Him, but He also speaks to us. How does God speak to us? Primarily. You said it like that? Through the Word of God. But also through the Spirit. The more we commune, the more intimate we come with God, the more we hear the voice of the Spirit. The more we recognize it's not the guy downstairs. <laughs> well done this morning, by the way. I thought for the first time it was, it was brilliant. I was going to preach next time, wouldn't you? She, she's quite good at that. Um, He speaks to us. This is two-way communication in every respect. The perfect example of intimacy with God is found in the relationship of the Trinitarian or the Triune God or the Trinity. Who does not believe in the Trinity in this church? Put up your hand. I want to speak to you. <laughs> really? No, afterwards, not now. <laughs> afterwards. I cannot believe that anyone who reads the Bible properly and receives Revelation of the Bible uh, through the Holy Spirit that we does not believe in the, in the Trinity. And there are various large groups of, of denominations that don't believe in the, in, in the Trinity. God have mercy on us. Remember, I spoke about the Divine Dance um, in February. Now, communing with God leads to an intimacy with the Trinity that is one of the basics of Christian living. Remember, God is God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Separate, yet inseparable. You understand that concept? You will understand the concept of the Trinity. Having said all of this, I often struggle to hear God's voice. God hasn't spoken to me in an audible voice. Although when I'm really quiet before God, sometimes I do believe I hear a voice. As long as it's not your own voice you're hearing, or your wife calling you, or your husband calling you, or your boyfriend hooting downstairs. Um, but one can identify when it's the voice of God. There's just a difference about it. I know that others struggle too. What can the problem be? My view is that the distractions, listen to, well, my view is not so important. My view is that the distractions of our modernistic and hedonistic, what does hedonistic mean? Chasing after pleasure. Beliefs and lifestyle are largely to blame. 
we've inclined to chase after science, philosophy, and pleasure. Humanism is rife. Humanism is New Age. Humanism is not Christian. If you don't understand what humanism is, go and look on Google. It explains there what humanism is all about. In other words, it's all about people, not all about God in the first place. The late Pastor Ed Robert in his book Communion with God states that one of the most probable reasons for our struggle in this area is that the Western world in general, and Christianity in particular, has placed too much emphasis on rationalism. We've been reared in an environment where the mind is far more important than the spirit. Can you agree with that? We were all reared in that way. I don't care where you come from, which denomination you were in, uh, any of those things. Understanding things, even, even if it's a kid, you know, you've got to achieve. You know, achievement is so much more important. What you are going to become is more important than who you are, in fact. We only accept the things that we can grasp or understand at the expense of our faith in God and revelation by His Spirit. Robert proposes the following four steps towards breaking through years and years of rationalism. Firstly, acknowledge and ask the Lord for forgiveness for allowing ourselves to be led astray by the rationalism of culture. Now, in our culture is not so strong, but some of the other nearby cultures are very strong. Uh, and it needs to be confessed. Spiritual change always begins with repentance. Ask the Lord to change us, to heal us, and to restore the eyes and the ears of our hearts. Make a commitment to make ourselves available to the Holy Spirit by way of waiting on the Lord and setting aside time to listen to His voice. And then lastly, exercise our faith and tell the Lord that we are expecting to hear His voice and develop a wonderful communion with Him. Now reading the Bible is a very good practice and we know that when we read the Bible we should realize that it's God speaking to us. It's not a storybook or a novel. So we have to commune with Him on a two-way basis. We speak and God answers. God speak, speaks and we answer. This also applies to our prayer life. Praying with the Bible at hand is in fact a very good habit. I want to conclude, some say hallelujah. <laughs> that's a good news for those that don't. For those that are watching their watches, that's good news. For those that are not, I can say I've still got two pages to go. <laughs> I want to conclude by considering five steps into a life of communion with God. Since I do not believe in changing the good news into good advice, some people, you know, change the good news into good advice, I will begin by quoting scripture, which is extremely important, and applying it to every point uh, as we go along. Our scripture reading is found in Habakkuk. Habakkuk was one of the minor prophets, but some of the minor prophets said major things that we should look at. Habakkuk 2 verse 1 to 4 reads as follows, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am, I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation, I put in brackets, vision, same thing, revelation or vision, and make it plain on tablets so that the herald may run with it. For the revelation or vision awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Quickly, five points from me uh, that I, I got from that scripture, Habakkuk. Prepare yourself for communion with God by quieting yourself before the Lord. We've had much of that in this church uh, for the whole year now, I think. Be still and know that I am God. I think it even came from the days of the 40-day prayer, remember? So one thing that God said to us, be still and know that I'm God. Habakkuk sets himself to wait on the Lord. He says, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts to see what the Lord will say. This is a picture of a man setting himself aside to seek the Lord. 
to wait upon the Lord. Now most Christians, including myself, do so much talking during our quiet time that the Lord is often unable to get in a word edgewise. It's a two-way communication. You cannot just speak to God and expect Him to do this and ask Him to do this and require Him to do this and demand that He does that without listening to what, what God has to say to you. That's why I said just now, it's good to pray with the Bible at hand. But sometimes God wants to say something to you as well. It's not only you speaking to Him. Psalm 46 verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Secondly, learn to identify God's voice and listen to what He has to say. Habakkuk says, I will look to see what he will say to me. This is the privilege of every Christian, to look and see what God has to say to them. Most of us have missed it. The majority long for it. Don't you long to, be, to hear from God? Some are learning to recognize His voice. During hard times such as COVID-19, it just seems to be such a never-ending thing. You know, you've got to resist this thing in the name of Jesus. You've got to resist COVID. Who prayed this morning so badly? You did, Laura. You've got to resist the devil, man. And he will flee from us. It works this way. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Amen. In this time of COVID-19, what's the question that we need to be asking? What is God saying to us? What is God saying to the whole world, to South Africa, to this church, to me personally? What is God saying to us through this, allowing this thing? Remember, God is in control. He hasn't lost control. He didn't cause COVID, but He's fully aware of it. Every aspect of it, or every individual involved with it. This, this sermon is going to be long. Sorry. <laughs> Communion includes seeing the visions God wants to give us. Habakkuk says, I will look to see. And then he goes on to mention the word revelation or vision twice. For the revelation or vision awaits an appointed time. Acts 2, 17 to 18. Makes it quite clear that dreams and visions are the normal revelationary flow for Christians. The different ways of communing with God and God communes in different ways with us. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Prophesy. They will prophesy. Just thinking, I'm dreaming dreams. I wonder why. <laughs> oh, maybe it's because I'm an old man. <laughs> fourthly, fourthly, write down what the Lord says to you. The Lord spoke to Habakkuk and said, write down the revelation or the vision and make it plain on tablets. Now, if you don't understand that and think, how am I going to be doing it on a tablet? If you cannot find a stone tablet, which they had in those days, pen and paper or your computer will do. The recording of a vision we receive from the Lord has many advantages and helps us to take seriously the fact that the Lord is speaking to us. It's a very good habit. I still haven't, at my age, developed that habit of writing things down. Some things, people are so good at it. Wendy, you're good at it. I see you writing it down. Simon, you're writing it down. Uh, Lincoln Ivan, I see Carl writing it down. It's such a good habit to write down things. Because when we can remind ourselves what God said to us five, four, three, two, one year ago or months ago. Then lastly, respond to what God says or shows in the most appropriate way. The Lord said to Habakkuk, write down the revelation so that a herald may run with it. What is a herald? A herald is a message bearer or a bearer of important tidings. When God communicates to us, He expects us to run with the vision. Sometimes we have to respond by way of action and obedience. He's speaking to you, and you know it's for yourself. Act upon what God says. Be obedient to what God says to you. If you haven't heard the audible voice, listen to what the Word of God says to you when you read it. 
I've often made the statement that the worst kind of Christian is the one who keeps God's blessings for himself and does not share them with others. That's what running with a vision means. Go and tell others. I think after this service this morning, the beautiful worship we have, and we're going to have lovely fellowship afterwards, and we have, have all sorts of things, all in the spirit, knowing that the Spirit of God is here. We need to be running out with a vision and telling others about not this church, about this God that we serve in this church, Amen. and what He's able to do. This applies particularly to the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't keep it for yourself. Share it with others gladly. Last sentence. I trust that you've been encouraged by the word of God today. To wait upon the Lord. To listen to what he says. To receive the vision or the revelation. To write it down in whatever way you think fit. And to share it with others. I believe that's the challenge that the Word of God and what the Holy Spirit is giving to us as a church today. God bless you. Sorry for going over time. Not only my fault. What's the time now? Don't go out and tell other people, I'm never going back to that church. They go an hour and a half, and I only go an hour. Amen. <laughs>